The following events were recorded as they happened at the Hospital for Sick Children in Toronto. On this episode of Life's Little Miracles, Grace faces her second brain tumor operation. Stephen makes his first trip to the ER. Maria needs surgery to end her eye infections. And expectant parents, Trevor and Rebecca, prepare for surgery for their unborn baby. I mean, I held a newborn on Saturday and there's so little, like what, to put them through surgery in the first week, like. Their healing is better than yours and mine. Trevor and Rebecca are expecting their first child in four months. Three weeks ago, a routine ultrasound revealed a rare genetic birth defect called an omphalocele. The baby's abdominal wall has failed to close, leaving a sac of vital organs protruding through the hole. If the baby is to survive, it must be transferred to the hospital's neonatal intensive care unit to prepare for surgery to repair the defect. So you then have a seat in room 11, first door on the left. Thank you. Thank you. I'm in my 21st week right now, and I went for the normal 18-week ultra ultrasound. And um, we thought we were going upstairs to the doctor to find out the sex of the baby, but so it's good that we didn't know what was going on. But we got up to see my um, obstetrician, and he informed us that uh, they noticed a small omphalocele. And um, so it's been about three weeks since we've known. Trevor and Rebecca meet the surgeon who will operate on their baby's omphalocele. Omphaloceles are, are in the spectrum of abdominal wall defects mm -hmm. that babies can have. So the baby's born and we'll assess the, the lung function, we'll assess the heart function. The baby will get fully assessed to make sure there aren't any other, any other abnormalities. Mm -hmm. And then we'll move on to assess how big is, is this. Now, if it's really a small one, so there's usually enough space in the abdomen and there's not that much outside that actually not only can you bring the skin over the top, you can bring the muscles together as well. There's nothing I can do to control this or like contribute to this or zero like there's nothing I can do to help minimize it's nothing that you did nothing, nothing that you I can do, do. Yeah. I mean, this is our first child so mm. I mean I mean I held a newborn on Saturday and mm. there's so little like mm -hmm. what to put them through surgery in the first week mm. like it's remarkable the the tolerance that children have to surgery their healing is better than yours and mine their scars are better it's just amazing. Can you give it. them pain medication and stuff? Absolutely. Like so they would be treated the way you and I would be treated. They're, they're treated as aggressively and as similar as to adults in terms of narcotics and nutrition. Well, this has been really, really, really helpful. Like, I, you just build all these questions mm -hmm. and I don't know. I mean, there's so many what ifs, but. And that's a hard thing. And, and we tried to eliminate as many as we can. And we wish we could eliminate all of them, of course. Great. Great. Well, thank you, you very much. Okay, well, nice to meet you. No thank problem. you very, very much. We'll talk later. Right. Rebecca's pregnancy will be followed by specialists for the next four months. Over the past year, three-year-old Maria has been hospitalized seven times because of severe infections in her left eye. Hi, sweetie. Doctors have determined that the infections are caused by tear ducts that do not drain properly. If left untreated, Maria could suffer permanent damage to her vision. Oops. Today, Maria's ophthalmologist hopes to create a new way for tears to drain from her eye to her nasal passage to save her from further infections. How are you, Maria? Can I take a look at your eyes? You have to look at Dr. DeAngelis and let him look at your eyes, honey. Remember, we're going to go and get your eye fixed. Well, as we said, there'll be a little tiny cut on the side of the nose. Okay. And then take away some of the bone, and then we'll reconstruct the tear duct. Okay. She'll have some tubes in there afterwards, and they usually stay in for a couple of months. Okay. Um, the tubes are really there oh. to allow the entire tear duct system to heal around it. Right. And we'll remove them in the office in a couple of months. They're not that difficult to remove. Okay. Um, and she should notice them. They'll be kind of buried in the corner of the eye. And she'll have some stitches there, which will dissolve on their own afterwards as well. Okay, so she doesn't have to get them removed then? No. They'll, they'll dissolve? Yeah. Okay. If you feel like that, 
You can feel, feel your back. back. Are you cold? I'm not tied up. Okay, I'm not tied up. Okay, mommy, you're tied up. Okay, okay. we'll okay. see you in a little bit. Okay. Right. Thank right. you very much. Okay. Maria's tear duct repair is minutes away. Four months after their first appointment with a surgeon, Trevor and Rebecca's first child has been born at Mount Sinai Hospital's high-risk birthing unit. While Rebecca recovers in Mount Sinai's maternity unit, Trevor accompanies his daughter Isabella through an underground tunnel to the hospital for sick children. Baby Isabella has been born with an omphalocele and is admitted to the neonatal intensive care unit. She needs a physical to ensure she is stable enough to handle the surgery she needs to place her organs inside her body and close the hole in her abdominal wall. An IV has already been inserted into Isabella's hand to keep her nutrition and fluids up in anticipation of the surgery. take her temperature. Sometimes newborns can, can get cold, and particularly she can get cold because she's got a lot of her inside out, mm -hmm. right? So she can drop her temperature that way. Yeah. She's fine. 37.3. Just going to take her blood pressure. All right. How's mom doing? Good. Yeah. Yeah, she's doing well. Okay, good air entry, both lungs slightly diminished, lower left. She's got, that's normal, mm -hmm. because this will be pushing, her lungs will be a bit small and everything's pushing around. So we'll, we'll pay attention to that over the coming hours and days, just to how well the air is getting down into the bottom of her lungs. Okay. But she's looking good. She's nice and pink. Isabella's vital signs are stable. So I'm going to let the doctors know that they can come and examine her and admit her. In just a few minutes, only one hour after her birth, Isabella will have her first appointment with a surgeon. It's time for Maria to be taken to the operating room for her tear duct repair. Her mother will stay with her until the anesthetist has put her to sleep. Everybody ready? Now we're going to bring a mask. It smells like bubble gum. I have a hunch she's not going to like it very much. So we will help you hold the mask, but if you just bring the mask to her face to begin with, it'll probably take about a minute for her to actually go to sleep. Okay. Everybody ready? She's going to go scoop and go here. Okay, sweetheart. It's okay. You see, it's a balloon there. Oh, no balloons. You hold the hands, Emily. Yeah, it's all right. Here's mommy, okay? Mama's right here. Mama's right here. Mommy's right here. Maria, mommy's right here, honey. I'm right here. Now that Maria is asleep, her tear duct repair can begin. The surgeon's first step is to make an incision in the side of Maria's nose. So we're dissecting down to find the tear duct sac, and I'm just pushing it off to the side here so I can get access to the bone. And it's this bone that we're going to make a small hole in that'll allow us to connect her tear duct sac to the lining of the nose to make the new tear duct for her. The tiny hole in Maria's bone must be created slowly and meticulously by hand to avoid damaging the structure of her eye and nose. Isabella's surgeon has been alerted to her arrival in the neonatal intensive care unit. He now has his first opportunity to examine the omphalocele and make his surgical plan. Have you seen it? Yes, at the uh, 
delivery. Did it bother you too much? No. Okay. No, it was actually not as uh, alarming as I thought. So. Okay. The intestines are in there. Mm -hmm. Is that the umbilical cord? Yeah, those are the normal vessels. They're going up to the top. Yeah. They just get stretched. I usually don't get to see that much. You see the three of them? Mm -hmm. The arteries and the veins. I don't see any liver in there. So what we need to do then is, is um, we go in and um, open this up a little bit and squeeze everything in here back into the abdomen. Mm -hmm. Is she in any pain from this right now? Or? Well, I think probably moving around is not too comfortable. No. Uh, but no, she shouldn't be in that much discomfort at all. Okay. Isabella's life-saving surgery is 18 hours away. Isabella's mother has been discharged from Mount Sinai's maternity unit and is reunited with her one-day-old daughter. Another big day. Mm -hmm. As though being born Two isn't days enough. in a row, yeah. yeah. Isabella is on her way to the operating room where surgeons will attempt to fit her protruding organs inside her body and close the hole in her abdominal wall. While Isabella is anesthetized, the surgical team reviews the procedure. We're going to first uh, open up the sac and see if we can push everything back. Um, sometimes the bowel is stuck to the sac, so you need to peel it off a little bit. And we inspect the intestines to make sure there's no abnormalities in them. And as we push it back, we'll chalk the anesthetist to make sure we're not pushing too much pressure on the abdomen. And make sure they can still ventilate well. And then we'll close up the abdominal wall on the skin. That all go pretty smoothly. The team's first job is to carefully squeeze Isabella's organs back into her body. Priscilla wants to see if she can squeeze it back when it's not stuck. So we're going to give Priscilla that opportunity. It's possible that Isabella's abdominal cavity may be underdeveloped and too small to hold her organs. If that's the case, the procedure will be aborted and doctors will protect the organs in a plastic pouch until Isabella grows. This could take weeks. It's been two hours since three-year-old Maria's tear duct repair got underway. Maria's doctor has successfully created the tiny hole in the bone in her nose and opened her damaged tear duct sac to create a new drain for her tears. So now we're about to make our cut into the <laughs> lining of the nose. As such. So now we're going to pass the silicone tubes into the nose. Take the flamodexin back in. So now the tear duct is effectively reconstructed. And we're going to start to close the wound. Great. We're all done. All right. All right. So we're all done. She's awake. Everything went perfectly well. Could not have gone worse. Um, so we opened up the, our existing tear duct, made a nice big opening. She has some silicone tubes that are now in the nose. So when you open her eye, you might see a little tiny end of a tube there, but the ends of the tube is actually down here towards the bottom of the nose. Okay. okay? So that'll stay in for a couple of months. Is there anything that we have to do in terms of keeping clean? No, uh, just the ointment, uh, as we described four times a day, and the drops four times a day. Um, if she has a little bit of a nosebleed, that's fine. Just put some pressure on it. If it's really, and it shouldn't be uncontrollable, but if anything happens or you're concerned, don't hesitate to contact us. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Very okay. Much. You're welcome. Thanks. I'll right. see, you see you next week. week. Okay. Bye -bye. Okay. Thanks. It's okay, Mama's here. Maria will be discharged later today, as soon as she recovers from her anesthetic. She will return to the hospital for a checkup in one week.
Four-year-old Stephen has been brought to the hospital's emergency room after hitting his head against a table. Hi, is this Steve? Yes, it is. Hi, Steve. I'm Dr. Park. Nice to meet you. Hi. You're Steve's mother? Yes, I am. Hi, Randy I'm Park. Lisa. Nice to meet you. I'm one of the emergency medicine residents working here today. Great. Okay. So I heard Steve had a fall today. That he did. Okay. When did that happen? Uh, approximately 10 to 6. 10 to 6. Okay. Steve, where were you when you fell today? In the, in the living room. In the living room? Yeah. Okay. Did you trip, Steve? No, I bent my head like that. Oh, okay. On the ground? No, on the table. On the table? Yeah. Okay. Does your head still hurt right now? No. No. He uh, was running around the coffee table, and he did a face plant into my table, which just happens to be solid marble. Okay. And you heard him cry oh, from yeah. the kitchen? Oh, yeah. My husband got up and Mommy, went right in there. Mom! Yes. When, when, we, when you were sleeping upstairs, and we and it was morning, and we got up, and they told me to go on a foot and sneak for candy. Well, you know... <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to sneak for candy and don't listen to your sister. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just taking a look here, it looks like it's not going to require stitches. Okay. Looks like this is something that would heal well with skin adhesive, basically crazy glue for the skin. Okay. So I'm just going to step aside. We'll get some of the skin adhesive that I was talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And get this cut closed. Great. Okay. Okay, thank you. And you're gonna get your boo-boo fixed. Yeah. It's been one hour since one day old Isabella was taken into the operating room. Her doctors have successfully moved her intestinal tract into her abdominal cavity. The team now attempts to make her a navel. I think they should have a belly button making course for people. Really, in the aesthetics of what you think a belly button should look like. Looks good. Oh, oh hi. So everything went fine. Okay. Um, Isabella has a nice belly button. <laughs> everything squished back okay. So everything went. Everything went back. Her her pressures when they put it in only went up a little bit. The pressure has to, yes, to be expected, so they didn't go up a lot. So it was reason for us to push everything back in. And she's doing very well. I guess the concern now is just how her digestive system is going to be working. Correct. And so we'll wait for the nasogastric tube drainage has to drop off and mm -hmm. not be green anymore. Mm -hmm. What's that, sorry? The, the, the tube in her nose That's okay. has to be um, not green, so no, no more bile in the tube. Okay. So that means the bile is going down the other direction and the fluid volume has to be low, and she has to start pooping, of course, on her own. Mm -hmm. We'll see That's you later. Great. Have a good afternoon. Thank okay, bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye, sir. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Mia. Isabella has been transferred from the operating room back to the neonatal intensive care unit. Oh, she looks totally different. Isabella has shown great strength coming out of surgery. But her parents won't know if the procedure has been successful until she begins to eat and her intestinal tract begins to work. Steve, I want you to lie down with your head this way and you can actually bring your feet all the way up onto the bed here. Back in the hospital's emergency room, Steve's doctor is ready to treat his cut eyebrow. Mom, can I ask you to just grab a Kleenex from, from the box sitting on top of the counter there? Great. And I'm going to actually ask for your help while we do this. Okay. Steve, your job is just to keep your eyes closed for one minute. Your job is to just place that over his eye. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's it. Don't open your eye. Okay. Keep it closed tight. Just to make sure that none of it drips down. Keep it closed, Steven. Good boy. Almost done, buddy. Okay, so the skin edges are together now. Mm -hmm. The width of the cut is just going to be the width of the scar that he's left with. And the last thing is just a band-aid. 
left. Thank you. Any questions at all? No, nope, not at all. Not as no, I don't think so. Okay, so Steve. I just want to make sure that this is it's stuck together because it, it is. It is stuck together. Okay. So none of that's coming apart. You shouldn't see any more bleeding from here on in. All right, Steve, you did a really good job here. What do you say? Thank you. Okay. See? That's all fixed. Yay! It's been three days since Isabella had surgery to move her intestinal tract into her abdominal cavity. Isabella continues to grow stronger and is ready to have her breathing tube removed. Oh, yeah. Okay. There you go. Okay. I got her. You got her? Yep. You're going to feel a lot better once we get that out of your nose. Okay, sweetie. Okay. Never mind. Once we get you all nice and happy. Yeah. And she's had her lip kind of taped up too, yeah. so. Okay. Okay. Look up. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The breathing tube is out. Okay. We got a little yeah. cry. Isabella is successfully breathing on her own. Okay. 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 Good. She is one step closer to discharge, but continues to need the nasal gastric tube to suction bile from her stomach and is not yet eating on her own. Four years ago, 14-year-old Grace Heron was diagnosed with a benign brain tumor and underwent a successful surgery to remove it. Now, another tumor has been discovered and Grace faces a second brain surgery. Are you going to take your uh, your dog in with you this time? Or? Yeah. Okay. Where is the dog? Uh, he's in my bag. And that's Her family hopes that this tumor will also be benign. When they took the tumor out, um, a little tiny piece of it was left behind, um, so tiny that they couldn't even see it. So um, that's what they're going to remove today. They picked it up on an MRI. And there were no symptoms for this one because it was in a different spot than the last one. So they've been doing MRIs over the last um, three years, like on a regular basis, and that's how they picked this up. So. Grace and her parents meet the neurosurgeon who will attempt to remove the tumor. Thanks for coming in today. Okay. How are you feeling, Grace? Great. Great. We've had a chance uh, before at length to talk about Grace's situation. You know that a few years back we had removed this very large craniopharyngioma, it's the, the tumor, that was found around the pituitary gland and the optic nerves, very delicate location. We were able to remove it successfully. We were very happy with how Grace did after the surgery. It was very complicated surgery. It took us about eight hours, as you remember, or more, to do that uh, big operation, but Grace came through it beautifully. And for the last many, many scans, she's been great. And then I guess about about three to six months ago, we noticed this change, and there was uh, evidence of a, a new growth that was occurring in a slightly different location this time. We still think it's craniopharyngioma. We don't think it's anything other than a recurrence. It's a cystic recurrence, which is good news, too. It's not a solid recurrence, so I think we'll be able to free it up and get it out of there very, very easily. Do you do a biopsy on it when you take it out as a matter of course? or We'll probably, we'll certainly take specimens at the time of surgery. Uh, looking at it, I can't imagine it being anything else but this. Okay. But if it does look suspicious for something else, I will take a biopsy and give it to the pathologist who can render an opinion for us as to what it might be. Okay. As far as the exposure, the uh, skin incision will be similar. As far as the risks go for surgery, we talked previously that um, she might get an infection in the skin or the bone or even the brain fluid, that's something we can treat with antibiotics. There's a risk of bleeding that would require uh, transfusion. I think that's pretty low risk. And I think those are the, the main issues. Okay. I'll see you downstairs. Thank you. Good. Thank Thanks. You You're welcome. It's time for Grace to say goodbye to her parents and go to the operating room for her anesthetic. So, hugs and kisses or high fives yeah. to mom and dad? <laughs> yeah? Okay. Love you. okay, see you later, sweetie. Love you. Love you too. Bye, Dad. Bye. Love you. I love you too. So just give me about an hour and a half. Thank you. Okay. 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 All right, let's go. So, here we go. Okay. Here's everybody. Um, 
How are you doing? You okay? Yeah. Feeling good? Yeah. Outstanding. You don't seem nervous. How do you do this? Huh? I don't know. Yeah. So you're going to be a neurosurgeon? No. no. I can't do with blood. I no, my know. goodness. <laughs> what would you like to do? Uh, work with animals. Oh, really? Train animals. Yeah. Stuff like that. Do you have any pets? Yeah, I have two dogs, a guinea pig, a cat, and a horse. Oh. Well, we're waiting for you to go to sleep, so uh, could we get on with this? Huh? <laughs> You're a teenager. You're supposed to be asleep. <laughs> oh, well, it's been nice talking to you. Nighty. While Grace's breathing tube is inserted, her neurosurgeon reviews CT scans of her brain tumor. And here now you're seeing a small tumor that's been growing in this region right here, just behind Grace's eyes, and it has the same look and consistency as her original tumor. So we think this is what's called an ectopic cranial pharyngioma. That means that a, a tumor that has arisen probably as a result of her original surgery and a, a small tumor seed or cell was deposited in this location upon removal of the tumor and has set up as an independent uh, growth and tumor at this stage. On the coronal scan here, you can actually see the tumor in its location. Here's Grace's right eye and here's Grace's left eye here. The tumor is now sitting quite uh, squarely between the, the two eyes and the midline very far forward. And today's goal is to come in here and remove this tumor and again to make her tumor free. Grace is now anesthetized and the surgery gets underway. The team's first job is to reopen Grace's scalp along the scar from her previous surgery to expose her skull. Stay in the old incision. Mm -hmm. okay. To, uh, start to drill some holes that we can use to have access then to the dura which covers the brain then open that and then we'll get uh, closer and closer to the, the tumor itself. The tumor is sitting as a round ball right here but in about uh, two or three centimeters right in the midline slightly off to the right side. The hole can go here. Can I have the pencil again? The team has made its surgical plan and will now begin to drill into Grace's skull to prepare to expose her tumor. The drilling must be done with great sensitivity to avoid catastrophic damage to Grace's brain. Fourteen-year-old Grace's brain surgery has been underway for three hours. The team of neurosurgeons uses microscopes to carefully expose the tumor. So we're just now on the dome of this uh, tumor. We're going to be exposing it all the way from front to back. It looks bigger than uh, I thought it was going to be, but maybe it has grown a little bit since even the time of her last scan. We're going to cut, cut into it. I'd make a, like a rectangle in it. You're going to see a gush of fluid, I think, because uh, I don't think it's all solid here. Okay, so there's the fluid coming out. Pick up the piece of please. See how it's deflating now? Like a balloon okay. opened up into it. And it's still a, a bit of a pedicle, but we're getting close to having this thing out. Okay, you guys can see that now coming out and almost have the whole thing out now. Okay. <laughs> oh, wow. The tumor has been removed and it looks benign. The team can now begin to close. Grace's brain surgery will then be complete. Hi guys, hi, how are you? Hi. So uh, you can see we're done a lot more quickly this time than last time. Um, I think it had actually grown since the uh, December MRI scan because it's certainly about the size of a golf ball today, it looked like. So I think as we said, it was a good idea to go ahead and take it out because it was certainly growing and we knew and it was going to continue to do so. Right. It was filled primarily with fluid, craniopharyngioma cyst fluid. So we punctured into the cyst, drained it, so deflated it, and then worked our way all the way around the entire capsule until we got a complete uh, resection. So I'm confident that we got the whole thing out of there. Okay. That's great. But everything went just basically according to plan. Okay. okay. All right, Thank guys. you so okay. much. All right, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks.
Grace has been moved from the operating room to recovery. Has she been awake? She's been awake. Grace. Grace. Are you awake, honey? Hi, honey. Hi, Lily. Congratulations. Everything went well. You feel tired? Still sleepy? A little bit? Yeah. Does it? Your head hurts a little bit? Yeah. yeah. So you can have a nice sleep now, eh? Okay. Back in the neonatal intensive care unit, Isabella's surgeon checks in on her during daily rounds. Good morning. Hey. So I heard you get the tube out. Yeah. And it's been about half an hour, maybe, and it's so far so good. So far so good. I heard her for the first time since when she came out. You so. mean in terms of making a speech? Yeah, and mm -hmm. just trying to cry. She's mm -hmm. obviously a bit hoarse. I mean, she's going to be hoarse for the tube, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Just had a little look at her tummy. Yeah. Oh, I noticed we took the bandage off yesterday. Mm -hmm. It's not amazing. too bad. It's kind of okay. I know. I'm sorry, sweet people. Cover you up. Don't be exposed. Mm -hmm. Things are working pretty well. So the next major milestone mm -hmm. to conquer is really feeding and gaining weight, mm -hmm. right? Like Correct. that's. So we'd like to see, you know, get up to full feeds and she weighs. Okay. So in kilos, about two and a half kilos. So roughly that's uh, 12, 15 an hour would be her goal. Or if she's fed every three hours, it would be 45. Okay. So about an ounce and a half to two. Okay. We'd like to see. And she has to gain weight with that, of course. Okay. 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 Well, thank you You're very, very welcome. much. <laughs> It's been one day since Grace's brain tumor was removed. Oh, Hi, Grace. Good morning. Hi, Mom. Hi, nice good, morning. You this morning. Good. Good. good morning. How you doing? Great. Yeah, you look great. Thank you. I couldn't believe how nicely you looked even last night after the surgery. Do you have much of a headache today? Yeah, a little bit. Where do you feel it? Is it up front or the whole head kind of hurting you today? Um, kind of on the sides. Is it? Yeah, it's very faint. Good, okay, now let's do some stuff. Can you see my fingers? Look yeah. over this way and over here. And up to the sky and down. Okay, how about give me a little squeeze here? I know you got your IV here. Oh, that's excellent. Great first uh, post op check. Looks wonderful. Grace is taken for a CT scan to ensure the surgery has not caused bleeding, which could damage her brain by creating dangerous pressure spots. Okay, sweetheart, the table's just gonna move in, okay? Here we go. The CT scan will also look for evidence that any tumor has been left behind to try to prevent a third recurrence. One week after her tear duct surgery, three-year-old Maria returns to the ophthalmology clinic for a checkup to ensure there are no signs of post-operative infection. Okay. So, how are we doing? I've been taking the patch off at home, okay. but when we go out to keep it clean, I... Sure. There you go, Papa. So there's still a little bit of tearing? Lots. Lots? Okay, yeah. that's normal. There's lots. Uh, let me turn the lights off for a second here. Yep. Yeah. Okay, put your chin up. Put your chin up. It's okay, sweetie. Well, the wound looks great. The black and blue is completely normal. Yeah. Um, that usually settles down within kind of 10 to 14 days. The most important thing is the wound is nice and clean. There's no evidence of infection. The tube is still in the corner. Good. We won't know the final results until we take the tube out. Okay. So it's completely normal. That doesn't surprise me. Great. Right All right. Yes. Okay. So thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, like I said, the tube, the tube stays in for three months, so we have to wait until uh, three months before we do that. Maria will return to the hospital in three months to have the tubes removed. Only then will her parents know whether the infections that have threatened Maria's vision are gone for good. Two days after her tumor was removed, Grace faces what she's been dreading most. Her headdressing and surgical drain will be removed. Okay. 
Right, so let me just uh, put the bandage off first. Just squeeze me when you need to, okay? So this is That's a big bandage. bandage. Yeah. Here, man. Oh, oh, you're starting to see your head. Good. I guess, yeah, I guess if your hair pulls, eh? do you feel your hair pulling on? Yeah. You got ponytails under there. Yeah. Yeah. Can yeah. you try and lift your head up a little bit for me? <laughs> Brilliant. Right. Well done. Very good. Yeah. Fantastic. I'm just going to get this little uh, stitch that's holding it in place. Yeah. It hurts. Can see you getting. It hurts. Just here where I'm cutting. Okay, so that's a stitch gone. Oh, oh right. there we go. There's it's a stitch gone. Stitch is gone. Okay. Oh, okay. Absolutely great, Grace. Okay, so that's breath. the last little yeah. bit. So I'm going to gently pull it out. It is going to pull a bit as so I'm doing it. Yeah, we oh, 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 After 12 days in the neonatal intensive care unit, Isabella is tube free. She is feeding and her digestive tract is working well. She's doing really, really well. She uh, started bottle feeding on Sunday night and uh, since then she's gradually increased to like her full feeding and is even taking more than that now. So she's digesting completely fine and eating ample and she's gaining weight now. Her belly button is uh, healing really well. It's just uh, the stitches are slowly disintegrating and uh, it's almost looks like a normal belly button right now. So she's doing amazing. Isabella is doing so well. She's ready to go home. Yeah. Thanks okay. again. You're very welcome. Good Christmas. luck with everything and you've got our number. Yes. This is way better. But infants with Isabella's condition can have trouble continuing to gain weight. She will return to the hospital for a checkup in three weeks. It's been 72 hours since 14-year-old Grace underwent brain surgery to remove a tumor. Hi, Grace. Hi. Good morning. How are you? Hi, Mom. Hi. Her surgeon does a final neurological exam to determine if she is ready to go home. I'm just going to take a look at the wound by myself to see how that's looking. You know, that's a dissolvable stitch, right? That will go away over time. Right. And I think that looks really nice. Um, I would say Grace has got a little bit of swelling over the forehead. Who oh, Grace, as I touch that, that doesn't hurt, right? Yeah. Here, that feels okay? Yep. Yeah. All right. Okay, now look at my fingers up here. Look this way, and this way, and down, and up. Yeah. And we told you the good news again about the CAT scan being clear. It didn't look like anything was left behind, and so we're off to a great start. All right, good. Anything else? Otherwise, we're really happy with her recovery since a big operation like this. She's been a a true champ through it all and uh, didn't turn a hair. I mean, basically everything went really well. All right, and we're just a phone call away. Right? Okay. Yeah, just, okay, all the best. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Thanks. Grace will be discharged later today. She'll return for a checkup with her neurosurgeon in one month. It's been three months since Maria's surgery. Today, the silicone tubes that have kept her reconstructed tear ducts open during the healing process will be removed. Yeah, on my lap. There we go. Hello, how are we doing? Good. How are you, Maria? Good morning. Doctor, okay? just asked you a question. How are you doing? Can I take a look at your eyes? Look up. Maybe. Up. Okay, um, and do you see the tube in her nose? Oh, yeah, you it's did? come out. Small. Has it? Oh, yeah. Do you, have a, do you have a little tube or a little worm in your nose? Mm. If we can get at the corner of her eye, uh, it would certainly be very easy to do. Are okay, you going to let the doctor okay. take the tube out? Okay, you suck your thumb and let the doctor do what he's going to do. Oh, Done. Oh, Almost oh. Done. That was great, Maria. That wasn't too bad. 
Now blow. There's no more tube. You don't have to be no scared anymore. Okay. Do I see what the tube looks like? Look. Right see. Yeah. That's it. That's all. It's all gone. Say, see you, tube. See you later. Oh, hope no more. <laughs> Five months after her tear ducts were rebuilt, Maria no longer suffers from eye infections that could destroy her vision. Mommy. There's been no tearing. Mommy. There's been nothing. Mommy. It's been really Mommy. good. Mommy. Everything seems to be going well. Yes. Finally, uh, a happy ending, right? Here, there's another propeller. Isabella is now one month old. She returns to hospital to see her surgeon for a checkup. Hi, Dr. Gerson. <laughs> How are you? I'm very well, thanks. How are you? I'm going to turn on a light for her and yeah. do surgery. Same things. <laughs> So how have things been since you went home? Things are going really well. Um, she's uh, at her last pediatrician appointment, which was two weeks ago. She gained some weight. She was at uh, six eight, so almost almost a pound more than when she was born. So six pounds eight ounces. Yes, and uh, I think she was she had just gotten back to her birth weight, I believe, by the time she left here. Okay. And now she's a pound over. Almost a pound, yeah. She was five ten when she was born. Let's have a look at her tummy. Yep. Should I just put her on the table here? Yeah, I'll be right there. Oh. Pop that off. Oh, these are good. These go all the way yeah. down to the bottom. <laughs> uh, the people who designed the other ones, obviously, they never had a baby. <laughs> That's going to look nicely, eh? Yeah, it's doing really, really well. It's not red at all, or... And you ever had any discharge or infection when you went home? Nothing. Looks great. It does. Super. Well, let's wrap you up here. She's doing doing very well. <laughs> well, thank you very, very much. You're welcome. No, we're very lucky. I everything went way better than we ever anticipated. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and three months after her discharge from hospital, Isabella continues to gain weight. You wouldn't know anything happened to her now after all that we went through, but. Uh, we're very happy everything's normal and she's healthy and... She's already doubled her birth weight in three months, which a lot of babies take four or five months to do. So, it's pretty incredible. <laughs> you laughing? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Seven weeks after Grace's brain tumor was removed, she returns to the hospital to see her neurosurgeon to ensure she continues to heal well. Hi, guys. Hi, Grace. How are you? Hi, Mom. Hi, how are you? Good. Well, how are you feeling? Good. Yeah? Good. Yeah. Great. Yeah. How's it been since you've been at home? Fine. Yeah? Yeah. Any issues? Yeah. 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 No double vision? No. <laughs> Good. You had a little bit of, when you went home, you had a little bit of swelling over the front part. It looks like it's all gone. Does that feel pretty good now? Yeah. Excellent. Great. I just um, wanted to um, talk a little bit about your surgery a bit more and also kind of illustrate it through the nice picture that your mother painted for me. I brought that up today. <laughs> Is that okay if I, yeah. I do that? Oh, I've told your mother I think it's one of the nicest uh, presents I've ever received. And um, it's a beautiful picture of you. Grace, um, in profile, this was the region of where your cranial pharyngioma this time was located. Right. Previously, um, the cranial pharyngioma, for uh, whatever reason, was located back this way, and this time it was a nodule that had developed here. So we're very confident that that's all been removed. Oh, she's healed up beautifully then. Okay. Yeah. And three months after her second brain tumor surgery, Grace is looking to the future. I'm working hard at, at high school, and I want to get to university, I want to go into dog training, I guess, and veterinary stuff. She's in a good mood. She's got lots of energy, and she's doing really well. We're very proud of her, of the way that she's come through this and the way that she's handled everything. So. I'm very happy. I love my life and all the things in it. <laughs> I love the animals.